Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. We took a little hiatus and back here with Kayfabe. Kayfabe! Kayfabe. Kayfabe. Don't, break, don't break the goddamn Kayfabe. Don't break the goddamn Kayfabe. Vince Russo, that son of a bitch, you broke the game. You broke the damn Kayfabe. Somebody call JBO to do, do, do a run and make him champion for the week so we figure this out. Put the bell on him so we get this together. You don't call break JBO. the damn Kayfabe. But we are back. Uh, excuse us for the interruption in programming. But uh, just to be honest, man, we are very busy men. Very busy men, man. Chenadu is a, a family man. He also put in comedy. He has a comedy tour right now. As you say, expect delay. Make sure you go check that stuff out. Make sure for those listeners and everything, wonderful, dope show. Like you said, we got a lot of stuff to do. You know me, all deaf, all the verticals we got going. So, But we are back because we got a lot to talk about in the wrestling world. So much to talk about in the fact that we had to bring a special guest here. As I told you, we still have the kayfabe team. You've seen him when we originally started this. And just like ourselves, man, this man is is busy. Movie star, television star, uh, rapper, uh, Twitch influencer, uh, social media, uh, uh, expert, entrepreneur, anything you could just put all of them hats in. Damn it, the dude is power line. And like, no, it's like the official, unofficial thing. Cleo Thomas is here today with us. Cleo, thank you so much for returning. It's like, you like, you the rock of the kayfabe. How you feeling? I'm, I'm so happy to be back, man. Uh, listen, well, any, t- any chance I get to talk wrestling with real wrestling fans, is always a good time. Like we love this. This is our lives. We we yes. find things to mimic within our own personal lives. We find connections. Like this is really a big deal to us. So I'm just yes. excited to be with Chinadu. I'm excited to be with yes. you, Will Farrell. I can't wait to get into all the topics today. Yes, man. Yes. Chinadu, bro, how does it feel to be back? We talking wrestling. Like we said, this is the wrestling show for us by us. Chinadu, what it do? First and foremost, it is awesome to be back on K-Fabe. It's good. It was, two weeks was a long time, guys. Behind the scenes, you know, taking care of wife, kid, tour, all that, uh, you know, everything with, uh, with with the variant going on. I had to switch venues for some of my cities. So I had to, you know, had, that's, a, that's a whole thing. Switch, I had to switch interest for venues and all that, the whole, all that stuff, whatever, though. But got to sort it out. But I still managed to watch wrestling. And as usual, WWE managed to find a way to make me mad again, man. They, man, wow. Woo! Man, listen, we got a lot. We 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 ain't we can't even start in WWE yet because there was a lot of stuff that happened, and we got we 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 got a lot to talk about. We got some of some to cover. We got NXT to cover. So y'all gotta stay tuned. You got to keep watching into this episode of K Faber. We are starting off first at AEW. Um, this past Friday, AEW decides that they wanted to drop a bombshell. And at long last, CM Punk has made his return to the wrestling promotion. Yep. And um, I must, I must say, I watched the video. The pop, absolutely amazing. Just, just not to take away from anybody, but just us having live action crowds being gone for so long. Thank you to y'all for making that such a moment. Yeah. Uh, he came back in fact, good old fashion. Uh, hit us with you know the Indian cross knees in the ring. Talked, called out Sting uh, and Darby Allen. And um, if I could just be completely honest, I didn't give two fucks about any of that happening whatsoever. I, 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 I it was, it was, you know, like when they throw, they was like a bombshell was dropped, and it was like no, nah, it was a firecracker that went off. It was like a black cat. You're like, pop. You're like, oh, that was that was cute. That was very cute. Um, as as I've said before, and I'll say it again, I'm like, hey, one of the uh, 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 Jericho's uh, little uh, apprentice Don't of the B of the B best B players is on <laughs> the best B list promotion. Who couldn't have put that together, guys? Who couldn't have saw that shit coming? But I want to hear. Uh, Y'all, y'all thoughts. Uh, Cleo, you know, you, you special guest. How, how you feeling about CM Punk returning? 
I think it's amazing for the wrestling industry to have Punk's mind anywhere near it. Having his hands anywhere near a wrestling product is, is gold. For the people who love that kind of wrestling and those kind of characters and those kind of personalities, it's gold. You know, there was a big, uh, you know, before, before the announcement really came, before the real debut of him showing up, there was a thing out there is like, you know, Punk wasn't The Rock. He wasn't Cena. He wasn't Stone Cold. He was never as over as those guys. Those guys were superheroes, period. Those guys were superheroes. The thing that made Punk so special, I believe, was that it was the relatability to the everyday man. Like he, he like Stone Cold was, was relatable to the everyday guy who wants to kick their boss's ass. Mm-hmm. Punk was relatable to the guys who are just guys, period. And that's what made him just so, so, you know, magnanimous and people are just drawn to him. And he comes back, he's at AEW now, uh, immediately calls out Darby Allen, which I was like, really? Of all the ones you're going to call Darby Allen, like the, the little sting, little runaround guy with him, his little cohort, like, oh, oh, you know what? But this is punk and I, I'm excited that he's back. Uh, here's what I hope doesn't happen. I hope that people don't tune into AEW every week expecting Punk to talk shit about the WWE. It's like, you you know Punk's not like that. Like, Punk has already given all the information out. When he did the Colt Cabana thing, he did the interview, he released everything. So don't tune in every week expecting for a pipe bomb, for another shot at the E, for a shot at Vince or Roman and blah, blah. Don't expect any of that. Go into it expecting to see more of Punk doing what we all love him to do, and that's be great on the microphone, have crazy antics towards the matches, because we all know he's not, like, the best physical specimen. Uh, excuse, excuse me, can you say that again, just for, you know, folks that got bad here? You know, like, for, we, say we it for said, Mick Foley. I said, I said he's going to have a lot of antics. Mm-hmm. He puts together great matches, but we all know that Punk isn't a physical specimen or athletic in that ring. We can all agree to that, and that's fine. Okay. But okay. Punk, I still love you, brother, and I, I'm glad you're back, and I can't wait to see what you do at <laughs> AEW. Chin, what it do, man? What it do? It's your boy Chin to do. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm a. What's so interesting too is that like, um, I really see both your perspectives, and I, I got to say honestly. When I was um, when when CM Punk first did that pipe bomb, that was I mean I felt that was the recharge I needed as a wrestling fan to really feel reinvested in that because in 2011 that was at a point too where you know, <clears throat> you know you have your actual adult life kicking off your career things like that and you're kind of wondering am I wasting my time watching wrestling right now and you know in terms of transition things like that because it's a lot of time to dedicate each week. Punk pulled me back in, to made me feel excited about watching Raw. I uh, I didn't you know he brought back the unpredictability that I kind of loved from the Attitude Era as a kid and back you know all the way since '98. Uh, he gave me that energy again like oh this is exciting anything can happen and you know like honestly they bad booking you know forced them out coming back I was very excited to see him on an AEW I felt the energy everything was appropriate Cleo just like you I was like bro Darby Allen like that's who you you don't call out Coca Banda. Like, if we're really going to go here, if we really going to come back and do this, Cole Cabana come out here right now. That's what I thought we were going to go with this. Yeah. I wasn't expecting Darby because I get, I get, I understand the uh, the stars that AW wants to build, the mm-hmm. Darby Allens, the Jungle Boys, the MJFs, but I got to be honest and critical. They have not done a good job of making those guys feel like the next three of this company to me. Like, I have not. I'm like, he... Okay, I, I know this is rent. MJF beat Jericho, but this is after they did a whole musical together. Oh, for like a whole year of this. Like, it's like, what? But with CM Punk, what he said is, is very exciting. And I was happy to see him, but I do feel, <clears throat> in terms of the, the long term, like you say, Cleo, I want people to come in every week expecting him to take a shot at WWE and at Roman because, honestly, it'll only make the product look worse and look weaker. Like, you guys are still taking shots at WWE? thought you guys were over this already. Like, when you see it on being the elite here and there, it can be funny. But when you're doing a nationally televised show and like and you're taking up airtime to take shots at them, it's just it's kind of corny to me. But I feel I'm excited about punk. Um, I I was expecting a bigger ratings boost than what they got. They got like 1.1 million. I was expecting like two, three, honestly. In my that's I mean, I was expecting that, but like people online were acting like it was amazing, but I was like, I mean, they didn't beat SmackDown. Like, how was that 
but they put in the demographic, but like, but no, but they only brought in the same amount of viewers that were watching anyway for like a loaded episode. So like they always, their peak is a million. So it really didn't move the needle to me the way I thought it should have, you know, in terms do, of game you, changer. You want to know why? That goes right back to what Roman Reigns has said in a quote that he moved. CM Punk did not move the needle, which is very much true. Because again, nobody thinks about, oh, that man, nobody, nobody remembers the time when your phone got charged really quickly. Like, man, dang, that really, man, that was a really quick charge. No, you moved on about your day. That was CM Punk in 2011. Because here's the thing that CM Punk has set himself up. And here's the thing. I'm not a hater of CM Punk. What I'm going to say is, is that you quit. You left. You were the everyday superhero. Like you were, you know, just if we, if we, we, we compared it to comic books, you are a Spider-Man. And we watched Spider-Man throw his suit in a trash can and walk away and not really come back. People called for you and you didn't come back. You teased all this stuff and didn't come back. You had a crappy career in UFC and still refused to come back. So now I'm upset because because the legacy you could have set to push the needle, you walked away from. And so now it's this entire hype that has been built around you that I don't think you're going to achieve because one, we've never seen Punk have to carry a franchise. Punk came in upset and that's what helped him elevate. But even so then other people started elevating and his stuff started going down. So we've never seen him take an entire promotion on his back and run with it. And that's both, and as you said, Cleo, it's not going to be good if you're sitting here talking crap about your competition. So that doesn't make sense either. So now it's just like, how do you come? The only thing that's remained in is your athletic skills in the ring. And then as we just said. Yeah. And, and the thing, and also too, in terms of the booking, whatever, like, like to me, punk, because he does other things outside of wrestling too. He can't wrestle on here every week. I know they say he's a, He's a full-time wrestler, but it would like it's the law of diminishing returns. If we see him over and over again, like it's like it's like we don't see Edge every week. We're not supposed to. He's a big, he's a big draw, so you can't expect to see Punk every week. And he's and then honestly, he's forty-two. He's forty-two, and he's seven years out of like in-ring work consistently. Whatever. I'm not saying he can't do it, but I'm saying, but at his age, you don't want to like wear him out like that. And you know, like because I always felt like for Punk in a, a one-year span. He should wrestle maybe five, six matches. Great builds to him, but use him to get over certain stars, though. Like, if you want to use him to get over, like you said, the Darby Islands, the MJFs, let's have great in-ring promos. Let's have great you know, video packages. Let's build up. Let's give it the big fight feels. And, I mean, and do it that way. But I just, to see him every week, like you said, I don't think that's a good idea. Jenna, do if Punk really want to contribute, get your wife to come out of retirement. Do I want that. to see AJ Lee come back. If you can do that, I'll give you all the credit in the world. Get your wife to come out of retirement. Yeah. Cleo, are you? <laughs> Cleo. <laughs> Cleo, if you could pick CM Punk's returning opponent, man, in AEW right now, who would you have picked? Because I think we can both agree. We wouldn't have picked Darby, Darby Allen first. That's what, I that's what I myself, I wouldn't have picked that. Yeah. I wouldn't have picked Darby Allen. Uh, I know I'm jumping the gun just a little bit here, but there's rumors and speculation that Adam Cole is coming. I would have yeah. held out for that matchup. Yeah. Off top, two mega stars in their own right. Punk obviously being the bigger draw, sure. But the attitudes between these guys, the confidence and cockiness between them, I would have loved for that to happen. That would have been my first choice for Punk to go after uh, coming to AEW. And there's, you know, like I said, there's rumors and speculation. We don't know if Cole's coming. We don't know. But if he does, that's what I would have loved. I agree. That would have been great. Well, either way, Cole's, Cole's going to be a rich man regardless, man, because WWE's about to give him whatever he wants to stay because they do not want him over there. And no. AW, Tony Khan has an endless checkbook, apparently. Yeah. He, um, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to that's be fun. I just look forward to seeing Punk, like uh, you know, give, like I said, give give his knowledge to the to the business and to the company. Like let like you you've wanted this. Like you've said that you would do things differently if you had the power. 
you got the power now, bro. It's you. They're not mm-hmm. going to tell you no. So whatever you do, it all falls on you. So whatever results come from this, whether they be good or whether they be bad, they're in your hands, bro. And we're here just to support and see how it goes. But if it starts slipping, you're going to call it. We're going to be like, mm. Listen, I'm doing I'm doing like the black yeah. people when yeah. they walked up and yeah. saw the Titanic. <laughs> this ain't for me. I'm going to stay behind. <laughs> Stay behind. I'm hoping. I'm, good. I'm. I'm wondering how long it's gonna be before, like, I'm wondering, like, is CM Punk gonna be like his own island compared to the super elite, like the Bucks and Omega? Because you feel well, like it's only a matter of time before they have to cross paths. Or, like, well, over, well, like, well, over. well, here's the thing. But here's the thing. As you explain, don't you? Dude, there's no real storylines being developed. So that's the other thing about this. It's like the only person who really has a storyline is Sting and Little Prick Darby Allen. So it's like, those are the only ones we know to have something. So it makes sense now why you selected him, but it's just like, then what? And it's just like still the the, the even roaming speculation of why isn't Cody champion? Because now we see all of these belts coming off of Kenny now um, as he's no longer the title collector. So what is it getting set up for him to take on Punk? Is it for him to take on moxley again and it's just like yo who is these next rows of people and it's just like but are you going to start building structure it's just like there's so many things in the air with aew it's like it's exciting but at the same time you've had exciting happen twice and we've seen what you've done with it which is very mediocre work so it's like this is your third try so it's either three strikes you out or it could be a home run we gonna see we gonna see Yes, we gonna see. We gonna see. But what we will say was a home run um, out this whole segment. Uh, of course, as always, the black and gold brand NXT 36 happened this past Ooh. weekend. Take over as always. Absolutely amazing. Um, weird scheduling. Uh, not sure what was going on. Um, yeah. SummerSlam premiered Saturday and NXT on Sunday. Which is um, very weird. It's usually the other way around. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was due to the stadium, if they had something already prior taking place, because it didn't take place in the same place. Uh, we know that NXT was at the uh, CWC for their pay-per-view. So kind of kind of confusing weekend, but we will mm-hmm. get into that. But uh, NXT uh, TakeOver 36, a lot of title changes, a lot of new... Uh, stuff going on, but we don't want to take up too much time because we do want to get to SummerSlam, so we're going to keep a couple of things moving. Of course, on the pre-show, uh, Rich Holland's uh, defeating Dre Paxter. Uh, Rich Holland is a part of, you know, uh, the, the, the faction going on with uh, the Bruiser Wade, so, you know, we're trying to see how that's going to develop. Uh, Rich Holland, um, you know, you know, it, it, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see what what, what, what that brings. Yeah. We'll see what that brings. So, uh, but uh, one that we do love, of course, one of uh, NXT's, you know, uh, uh, fan favorites that you like to, the underdog you like to root for, Cameron Grimes finally got to see some title gold, capturing the Million Dollar Championship against LA Knight, having uh, Ted DiBiase in his corner, now being able to really, uh, you know, take that next step and showing what it's like for him to be a champion and why he should be a staple at NXT or if he moves up. Uh, I do like how this played out, kind of like how they went in the route that myself and Chenna do, uh, was saying they should do with the Million Dollar Man. Glad that y'all heard that and yes. was listening. Um, well, we're not check, by the way. We know you're, yeah. we, we know you're watching. You better send we know y'all watching. Yeah, like, sick of this, sick of this. Yeah. So, uh, so, Where's my Where's my I'm sorry, sorry about that. yeah, no, 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 you let them know, you let them know. They be like, Oh, I didn't know this was an international show. Oh my god, oh my god, we're so sorry, we don't want an incident. Um, but man, um, Cleo, how do you feel though about the million dollar championship being now a, a title on NXT? I think it's so cool to bring bring it back just because of the nostalgic factor. It was such a big thing for its time. And to bring it back, here we are in 2021, and to see it being able to almost like – I wonder if, if it's – would you consider it in the same the same realm as a international – excuse me, uh, intercontinental title? Is it in the same as the United States title? Is it looked at as that, or is it more – I don't want to say – gimmicky is the wrong word. Novelty, maybe? novelty is, that a, is, it, is it that because it still gives you a hell of a spotlight 
And you, I, I don't. Okay, so what would you what would you consider King of the Ring? That's kind of what I consider that in that level. Like it is a title and it has a belt. Like because King of the Ring could have a belt if if requested. Um, so that's kind of where I put that in. But I didn't want to put it with like the twenty four seven championship or the hardcore. Like those are different things. But like I put it with that prestige. Yeah, yeah. I feel it. Yeah, because I, I, I feel like the it's it's yeah. I, I agree. It's, it's such a good idea to bring it back because, like you said, the history of it and it just goes to show you, like with, with proper booking, how you can really make something elevated. Because that started off as a a title to match a gimmick. It wasn't created mm-hmm. in a tournament. It started off for one guy, and now mm-hmm. that one guy was able to pass it down to somebody else. Like decades later, after this belt has premiered, and it's still effective, it still looks amazing. And like I really seeing how, seeing them work on the million dollar belt, it kind of makes me wish they would put like a little bit more like emphasis on the twenty four seven title. Like I know it's a novelty gimmick belt, but they really they could have revamped that and make that okay. Who can hold like like hear me out? This is crazy, right? They could have made the twenty four like seven belt kind of like your Iron Man belt, whatever, like. You are yeah. the ultimate entertainer. Like you're doing press runs, you're doing this, you're doing matches. Like they could have built it to where, like, do you have what it takes to carry this? This could have been something like mm-hmm. this belt test to see if you really can make it here in WWE because our job is 24-7. You're traveling all that. Instead of making it a gimmick belt, they could have done something with it. But well, like what well, they did with the million dollar belt. Yeah. Well, one thing you could do just to just to piggyback on that though, you could have also kind of themed that thing like that. So imagine if Alistair Black had the 24 uh seven title while he was still there. And so like you kind of go through his world. So now you can start to like kind of go from those production sides that they were really focusing on during that time. Like imagine seeing an entire like fight scene kind of like the redemption of Alistair Black going through like an apartment building, knocking these people off and stuff like that to protect yeah. this title. And stuff yeah. like that. But it's just like, yo, it looked like a real like set of fight. Like that, not that gimmicky stuff. It's just like, yo, yeah. this is what I go through. You can even have some people in there that's like martial arts. And imagine the last person is like Steve Blackwell. Yep. But instead, right now, we're gonna get Dakota Kai trying to fight Reginald for that belt because you know she was unsuccessful in that in that pursuit against uh, Raquel Ooh. Gonzalez. That Which I just you, you, you see, here, here's my thing. I I it's like Dakota Kai is a good like it's like you have the potential to be a great mastermind and they're like not letting her do that. Agreed. Like she really could have played the mind games up and really beat Raquel that way because we know strength wasn't going to get it or anything like that. But it's like, yo, like it but it's always that it's always for some reason that she'll have this great mindset. And it's like, yo, she just set this up where she could take this. And then it don't happen. She she got squashed by Raquel. Same thing with Tegan when when her and that beef happened. It's like I don't know why they won't let her close with this. And then of course like now Kaylee Ray is now in the picture, which um I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, like like I didn't I didn't get the whole like I don't know. Maybe it's just I don't know. Her it's a, well, you know, well for 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 Kylie Ray, I do know like she's kind of left and gone back to the industry quite a bit. I know it was about Kylie Ray, right? Yeah, Kaylee know, Ray, the the uh, the former NXT Women's Champion, uh, NXT UK Women's Champion. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. And it's like, yeah, I, yeah, man, I, I, you know, for for Dakota kind of, I feel like they hot shot at this view because I think because they know those changes are coming, so they had to go ahead and wrap this up, I guess, but. They were taxing for a long time. It was so much history between these two, and they kind of just ran it, and it was done. Yeah, it was just like there's so much that could have went there, like so many matches. Like we could have had an Iron Iron Woman match. We could have had a street fight. Like there was so many things these women could have went through because it was like it was kind of making it, it was kind of like you wanted them to not be. It was like we, you know, you think they're friends. And stuff like that. And they're in this together. But it was kind of like you think about when they first started, they came together with the uh, the the anticipation to destroy people. And it kind of like broke up like that. I'm like, OK, well, I guess this partnership just has come to its crossing and you came to you finally took your shot. I'm like, that's stupid. And, and just like that. And so like and so to me, like going forward, like, Cleo, do you think do you think NXT is going to do anything with, with Dakota Kai going forward, though? Because she's been there on a, for a while now at this point. Yeah. And another attempt that uh, attempt of that belt unsuccessful creatively. What do you think they will go from here with her? 
I'm kind of nervous as a whole for the women's division at NXT. I think, I think, you know, that, that initial run, the, you know, we got superstars out of those, out of the four mm-hmm. horse women. Yeah. We got Becky Lynch. Yeah. We got Charlotte Flair. You got Sasha Banks. You got Bailey. Like, it's, it's going to be very hard to do that again, to like recreate that magic and let lightning strike again. So I, I'm, I'm nervous as a whole for the NXT women's division, like I said. Uh, but with Dakota Kai, man, I've always loved her. Like, I've always loved her aggression, like her tenacity. Like, I never when she, when she, when she, I can't remember whose knee that she went after when they were like in cages at one of those old, the old NXT. Uh, Tegan Knox. It was Tegan Knox. Yeah. Bro, yeah. when I saw that, that immediately made me a Dakota <laughs> Kai fan. I was like, she gets it. She's hardcore. <laughs> she's dope. Let her just do 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 this to everybody. And it's just like the like the compact size of her being able to be that ruthless and that aggressive. I love it. Uh, man, they got they got to get some better storytelling for her. I don't know if this was a setup for a call up. I hope not. I hope oh, no. don't just hear no. just pull up. I'm like, oh, she's here now. Like, why? Don't oh, not yet. Because we all know when they get called up, they, yeah, they flounder. So we'll see. Shout yeah. out yeah, man, and I e Ember Moon, who I love, but they man, they just blew. They blew it. Yeah. She's she such. She's so amazing. She yeah. was. Yes. She was yes. so ready. I don't know uh, what was going on during that. Also, time. also the Rhea Ripley as well. Um, it's not. It's not looking too well with that one either. So, uh, but. To, to kind of get the spirits back up with that, though, what did look well, what definitely served, came with the heat. Everybody expected it to be one of the matches of the night, and it definitely did not disappoint because the Walter Empire fell Ooh. this past Sunday. Ilya Ooh. Dragunov has defeated the ring general and is now the new NXT United Kingdom champion. And all I can say is, yo, like, well, duh, that is like, I don't like, I know they say Slammy Awards, but it's like, yo, that was magic. That was an or- orchestra of violence. That was a WrestleMania card match. Yes. That was a. Bro, Walter lost that title. Like that's so crazy to me because like he's he's held it damn near before like the before the pandemic. Like he's yes. been having like I just like I didn't expect it to never like yo let him retire with that damn title. You're not taking it from him. You shouldn't. And then for it to be now stripped from it and, and his opponent uh, last night what, what's his name one more time Will? Uh, Ilya Dragunov. Ilya Dragunov. Like that's such a great like drop of the title to someone who people are i guess are going to be excited to see where they take this are we oh, yes. gonna, are, will we get an immediate rematch should we or are well, we going to go ahead and remove walter from the situation as a whole now no we need a three we definitely I, I definitely believe we're going to get a three because of the way they promoted this as a two and they said because of the fact they kept promoting it after 10 months they're finally going to go at it again so nice. there has to be a third one because walter won the first one dragon also won the second one there has to be the rematch and I'm not even gonna lie, it probably, like you said, that might most likely will happen at one of these major events. If not Survivor Series, maybe Royal Rumble. And if not, I could see, like we said, that could go on WrestleMania. Those two did mm-hmm. not disappoint in that. That is probably one of the, like, I mean, again, their first one match of the it's year. Test in the end of that match. No. It's just, oh, oh. <laughs> everything bro it was just yo this was this was david and goliath man like this was like yo i, I bet you daniel bryan was sitting there proud of that man but i gotta say man Ilya dragon off has become a favorite over there the uh, over there across the pond at nxt uh uk people are just like he said I, one of the coolest things he said i could not wait for uh my son to wake up and find out that his dad the champion and that's exactly what happened so Beautiful. Definitely deserving of it. I cannot just wait to see how he carries uh, NXT UK into the next regime that's now under Ilya Dragunov. And uh, but and, and oh yeah, I'm not, not gonna say because uh, because I because I, I, if I'm not mistaken, rumor has it Vince wants Walter, like he wants him on that main roster. And like the uh, thing is, they always say Walter doesn't want to travel. You know, he wants to stay in his home country. But they said, you know, Vince is willing to open that checkbook up for Walter because he wants going forward. He wants those big. Big, big guys, 
who can mm-hmm. like headline wrestle. He wants big stars now. And, so, and if you know, and if you notice, Walter has definitely cut down on the weight, gotten a little bit more toned up and stuff. As you can see, something that Vince has always been uh, adamant about uh, his big superstars. You know, we've had, he've had he's had his differences with Kevin Owens and fluctuation of weight and stuff like that. So, like you said, um, and then and then too, the uh, Imperium is already over here. So it's like you know, the Bartell and then the other cat is already over here fighting for the NXT titles and stuff like that. So. There's no reason for Imperium to not show up to SmackDown or Raw or NXT. It's, it, yeah, he's coming here, man. Undisputed. He's coming this way, man. Undisputed. Yeah, it is undisputed. And speaking of undisputed, uh, <laughs> we had an undisputed finish between uh, two. Um, I was about to tell a lie. Let me not tell a lie. We had a very uh, undisputed ending to uh, uh, the superstar and the sidekick that thinks he's going to do something. Uh, Batman and Robin finally came to a close with Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole. Two out of three. Kyle O'Reilly takes the win. Uh, the two out of three. He, uh, uh, the two out of three match was, of course, a regular uh, pin uh, fall match. The next one was a street fight, and if it had to lead to the third one, it was going to be a steel cage, which it did. Kyle O'Reilly taking the first match, um, Adam Cole taking the street fight, and then Kyle O'Reilly taking the steel cage match, tapping out Adam Cole. Um, I gotta ask, anybody. anything look fishy about that match? Like that was not how it was supposed to end. Um, I anything kind of feel like we didn't get the normal Adam Cole experience like we normally get. Oh no, uh, uh, the Adam Cole experience ain't gonna come back until until once we sign that contract. You guys are gonna get this favor I'm doing for you, this deal by deal week. You have to get a cool match. I'm not gonna hurt myself too bad because I might have to fight for the AW title next month. So I gotta stay in shape. You know, me and Britt are going on vacation next week, too. So, eh, you know, I'm going to give you, like, a mid style kind of match here, guys. Don't worry about it. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. But I haven't signed that new deal. So, and uh, was, um, Man. I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at him at all. For that rule, bro. I, it's about leverage. And this business yeah. is about leverage. And he yes. knows, hey, man, I'm not going out here hurting myself. Then I'm shelved shelled yeah. after I'm this close to being ain't gonna Isaiah Thomas me ain't gonna happen nope. no, I <laughs> man and, and then you know and and, and it sucks for Kyle O'Reilly because it did absolutely nothing for him like that no. was definitely that was the close you know that was the closing chapter because it's like <laughs> unfortunately what's bad about it is this feud is like always favorite adam cole like he said bro you'd be nothing without me and it's like unfortunately kyle that is there's a lot of truth to that and so it's just kind of like you know i I hope to maybe see him start getting like a little bit better in singles competition because he puts on great matches uh i I, they might start leaning him more to the cruiserweight division and stuff like that because i seen him when he did go up against the uh uh you know, current cruiserweight champion, uh, and they had a very, very good match. So, you know, we'll see what's in store for him. But like as we said, man, Adam Cole uh, definitely has a a, a in ring genius that I just, uh, I, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta admit and respect and admire. So, uh, but moving on to the main event of NXT um, was Samoa Joe versus Joe, Joe, Joe. Joe, 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 Joe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Every time I think, every time I think Karen Cross, I think Karen Cross is sorry. Don't do that. Oh my god. When yes, I tell bro. You, I thought it was Lord Tenzai coming out for a second. I was like, who's this guy no. with the new ring with, with the gear? Oh <laughs> my god, bro. Legit. The next night, that's how he debuted. I was like, no. Nah. Bro. From y'all, the y'all did him dirty. Hunter's gonna the, smack you, Vince. Hunter is yeah. going to smack you. You keep doing this to his people. Yeah, you know, Hunter shows up. Hey, Karen, you ready? Yeah, uh, you know, Hunter, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, what's, what's going on? I'm really excited to be here and I really appreciate it. But uh, you know, I just got through talking with Vince and um, he, he wants me to walk out with this. This, this, oh, yeah. it's a f- <laughs> what is this? What is this? He got he got that from Prince Albert's locker. But like just get hey, I, I use that word this all the time. Yeah. I mean, but you know, I mean 
Whew. Nah. Why does Vince hate NXT? It's, it's, this, this has to be punishment for losing the Wednesday Night War. It has to be. It has to be. Like, why? It, it doesn't have to be. We, we just got to call a spade to spade. This dude sucks. I don't like I'm that. like I'm sorry. There's no like we've said it before, bro. Like there's the when when on, 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 on. It, it bro, it doesn't work. I don't know it like yo, like you bro, go back to the drawing board. None of this has worked since you got here. It started everything more fighting in the ring. Exactly. Me. This entire match proved everything we need to know about carrying cross from the beginning when he came out to the chance we want Scarlet. That's all we want. We want Scarlet. When it came down to the entire match, it's like, yo, your move does not work. That's the in-ring technician that we want holding this belt if we want to see someone get put to sleep. Yeah, and you know, and, also to be, and also to, to be honest too, like to, uh, because uh, I'm, I'm, you know, to all, 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 all of our K, what do they call K favorites? I don't, I know what we call them, but all the people that watch the show, you guys know we discussed it in the past too. Like Karen Cross, I, I don't get it. Um, I hate that they I hate that they fed so many NXT elite to this guy. They fed Finn Balor. They fed Adam Cole. They mm -hmm. fed Keith Lee to this guy. I don't get it. I don't like it. And honestly, I feel that Vince separated Scarlett from him because two things. He saw what we see. This guy isn't like I don't see it. And I, him having the belt, I didn't see it at all. Maybe no. the maybe the North maybe the North American belt. And two, with Candice LeRae now being pregnant. That NXT women's division, you're gonna need somebody in there now. Maybe they're like, okay, Scarlett, you gotta get in there now because now we've lost Candace. Candace was one of the workhorses of that division. So yes. like all you all you gotta do, keep her as same, literally keep her same gimmick. She can do all the, the, the stuff because every time you see it, it fit her, not him. Keep everything the same. Keep the intro the same. Even the TikTok, like yo, you could tell she could do the whole thing. Time is up. Yeah. And she can reign over that stuff because, hey, hey, man, her and Raquel are going to go insane in that ring. Her versus Io Shirai is going to be ridiculous in that ring. Her versus Amber Moon could tear up any arena. Yeah. yeah. But you know who can't do that? Karen Cross. And we're nope. so glad that it is finally over. I'm glad the muscle buster is back yes. and Samoa Joe is here at the top Cleo. of the kingdom. <laughs> yeah. Cleo, uh, my, now, uh, now this is my theory. Now, now, I, I think it's all, we all know that Samoa Joe is a Triple H guy. We all know that. He's a Triple H guy. When they got released, he brought him back. Do you yes. think that, like, and I know that with the upcoming changes to that roster, do you think that Triple H, like, do you think he had a very big say in, like, all right, if we're going to go out, put this belt back on one of my guys then one of my one of the top guys that helped make this this brand really big and do you feel like they're kind of going to make him kind of like that new standard of the shit passing by of what the new type of NXT champion is going to look like a big brawler type guy because they say Vince wants big guys he wants yeah. guys like Odyssey Jones now he wants he doesn't want any more he said any more indie his words indie midgets you know any more of that so do you feel that now uh, that Joe has the belt. Do you think? Do you think that they're going to make him the new kind of prototype standard of what the NXT champion will be? It sh it should be. When the news came that jo okay, J listen, Joe goes to NXT. He has that face down with Kevin Owens, and I when he first came there, I was through the roof. I was like, this is all I want. I just want this. Yeah. So boom, we get the we get the team up with Finn. He's NXT champion. They become two time NXT champion. They move him over to Raw. He goes after Seth. Damn near blows Seth knee out again. <laughs> Chokes him out. We get that match. Cool. And then it was. And then and then there was a moment where Joe. There was uh, who was in the ring? I think it was um, Mustafa Ali. It was Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar, mm -hmm. Roman Reigns, Randy Orton. And Joe came out and just does what he does amazing on the microphone. He went out every single one of them down the line. And he looked Brock Lesnar in the eye and said, hey, you look at me when I'm talking to you. We can straighten this out right now. And then we get the Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view? Yes. 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 And then we get the Brock Lesnar match. And before the match starts, Joe is going ham. That's the yeah. Joe I know. And that's the Joe I love. And that's the Joe I wanted to see come into the WWE and just, just manhandle everybody because it's believable. I really do believe Joe is capable of tapping anybody out. Joe's capable of beating anybody's ass in real life, any other wrestler mm -hmm. in there. I would I could put Joe up there with Brock to be real. 
he's back at NXT. Thank God. I was so upset when, when it was announced that he was leaving or that he got let go. I was like, why? You move them to commentary and then you let him go? Why? I'm so glad Hunter didn't let him hit the hit the scene, be a free agent for long, scooped him up, brought him back. He's here. Now he's NXT champion. And I agree that he will be the definition and the standard of the NXT champion moving forward. We've had a we've had a, a lot of different guys at NXT, bro. Adam mm-hmm. Cole, mm-hmm. you get uh you get you Finn. Uh yeah. who, who was in between that time was kind uh, of like- Shinsuke, Shinsuke around that same time. Johnny Gargano. Yeah, Gargano. Sami Zayn. Uh, Goldie. Like, that was such a yeah. weird, crazy thing, but it was dope to see. It was specific to them. So, yeah, yeah, Joe Joe yeah. being the, the definition of what NXT can look like, will be like, I'm all for it. And also, too, a lot of things that it's going to help as well is it's now going to bring more prestige to that North American title because now that's where those guys can go. So that's where those matches can be put on because it's like – you set such a precedence with that ladder match. Like, remember that Adam Cole, Ricochet, Johnny Gargano, uh, Tommaso Ciampa. Like, you had you had so many people clamoring for that title that now it's just kind of lost its thing. So it's just like, hopefully, now with Joe setting that super heavyweight type of feel and those cats coming after that, this can bring more to the NXT North American title and really give some more, you know, precedence to the single belt. So that way, you know, like, it can have that kind of carry, like how the Miz did with the Intercontinental title. People can start being proud to be like, yo, I don't have to always shoot for this when I know, hey, if this is the lane I need to be in at this time, let me be in it. I think that's one of the things. And then another thing that I think is going to happen, which um, works because it's this person, we may finally get this triple three, this triple threat match at Survivor Series with all three titles in the ring. Joe, Roman, Bobby. That would be... Think man. about it. All because you can't tell me it's a rookie thing for it to happen. And you see Joe walking out. Oh, Roman! Man. I want it. Man. I want it. Come on, man. I want that too. All right, all right, look. Quick question. All right, this is question I want to ask you. Okay, let's say the triple throw happens, right? It's, it's Roman, it's Bobby, it's Joe. They are, they have, like, they've gone 20, 30 minutes. Listen, blockbuster match. They're all laid out in the ring. They're all laid out. Big E's music hits. Cleo, who does he pin? He pins Bobby. He pins Bobby. Bobby. He pins mm-hmm. Bobby. It's he personal. Bobby, it's personal. Yeah, he goes and pins Bobby. You don't pin Roman. It just like you can't. Roman is, is yeah. literally like the most. He's drawing in everybody. Everyone wants to watch yes. Roman with mm-hmm. that title. So you don't touch him. Mm-hmm. Joe. I, I love Big E. I love the New Day, but I I, I do got a, a soft spot for Joe. You got to leave Joe with that title, Bobby. Yeah. yeah. Go, nah, go, go I agree. The, it's a, it, 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 yeah, it's the best feud. It's the best feud for it to happen because New Day is over there now. With especially like you know with Brock, uh, uh, you know going with SmackDown. We'll get a little bit into that in just a little bit. It yeah. makes sense of that happening. But if we really want to give this just an off the wall thing at Survivor Series and make it great, Eva Marie comes down, pins What's everybody. That? And gets all three of the belts because it's all oh, red, red everything. everything. Listen, brilliant. That, that's what the people need. Eva Marie. Yes, Eva Marie. They let that woman go. They let that woman go. She went and trained. She went and trained. She got. She was battling some personal demons. She overcame all of those things. She came back. They gave her another run, and this shit still don't make sense. I don't understand. I'm like, what is going on here? Why are we allowing this to happen? In the, <laughs> the same year, they let go of Mickey James. They also hired. They also debuted Eva Marie back on that roster. The same year, and Braun Strowman. Yeah, <laughs> Braun Strowman, and immediately Eva Marie was there. What? Hey man, what and that's the question that we had for a lot now that we are moving into our uh, next uh final, of course, look over, which is WWE Summer Slam. Okay, the biggest party of the summer debuted in Vegas. Uh oh, I think that was one of the first events in that stadium. Uh uh I, I forget the name of it. I know it started with an A. Uh 
Allegiant, yeah, Allegiant Stadium, one of the first events there. Um, and in good fashion, man, over 50,000 people in attendance. Shout out to the WWE Universe for showing up and showing out, making sure that, hey, people knew what was going on. And trust me, we um, a lot went on. And um, uh, just just spoiler alert, it's about to get real emotional for us a little bit, just, just letting y'all know. So uh, a lot of stuff happened. Uh, like we were gonna start just getting into it from where it first start uh, at the beginning. Big E defeating Baron Corbin in you know whatever kind of filler match that was just with Baron yeah. Corbin and just kind of keep Big E you know in the picture and stuff like that. Uh, to make briefcase back to right. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm just like you did. You did. I liked when you had it where Paul Heyman was doing the interview, then looks and Big E's right there. That's more than enough. You can, you can, you, you could have kept doing spots like that. You see Roman with the bloodline walking out, then you just see Big E laying on one of the uh, big crates and stuff like this yeah. with the money in the bank for, uh, right there. Like, that's easy to do. Like, we don't need this type of stuff. I don't know what you're trying to do with Baron, but it's like, don't involve Big E. Don't just, just let's leave that yeah. be. But it, but he, either way, went over, got his briefcase back, didn't get his briefcase, whatever. We're, we're sure he'll have it on Congrats, c- Congrats on getting the SummerSlam payday each. Tour. I'm happy for you, man. Good there you go. <laughs> that's that's what yes. Time. There you Got go. That paycheck. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. And then we're moving on to the Raw Tag Team titles. Uh, new one, new Raw Tag Team champions, RK Bro, <laughs> Riddle, and Randy Orton. They're the odd couple of the uh, tag team division, which is kind of something to say since of who they just took it off of, uh, defeating AJ Styles and Omos. Um and becoming a new Raw Tag Team Champions. Um, this doesn't upset me as much just because of who they've now taken it off of. They've kind of killed that stigma of us having these mis- mismatched tag teams and stuff. So, uh, but how? What are y'all like? Like Cleo, what are your thoughts on these? Like, clearly, good, like great individual stars being put as tag teams. How are you feeling about seeing this new thing, especially in the Raw division? I like Randy. I've always loved Randy just as Randy, period. I hate it when he joined the Wyatt family. I was like, what? <laughs> Rated RKO was great for its time, for its era, mm-hmm. sure. But this this riddle thing, I'm every week I'm just like, RKO. RKO's coming. RKO. And then they do it, and then they back out of it. And then give him the title. So I'm like, oh, my God, you're going to extend this now. So I got to see more of of, of, uh, uh, Matt Riddle trying to be the ultra cool bro with Randy Orton, who's definitely old as shit and out of touch. (laughs) The the backstage interview between Mario Lopez and those two, I was like, wait, did Randy just screw up and then made it a part of the moment? And then Riddle... Randy's the mm. old head. Randy's the yeah. fucking old head in this. Oh my yeah. god! So he's not the cool guy, which is whatever. I th- here's what I think it is. Randy's at a place in his career where, he's like, hey man, I'm Randy Goddamn Ward. I can do whatever I want. He's been doing that forever anyway. But I think his kids might love uh, Matt Riddle. He connects more with them. So it's a thing for the kids. It's like, yo, my kids yeah. love Matt. So this is what we're gonna do. I love yeah. it. <laughs> You know what's crazy? I vividly remember Randy Orton cutting the promo on Mick Foley of him in line saying, I'm 23 years old, Mick. I have my whole future ahead of me. I remember him saying that. And now he's the old head now. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yes. I remember that. Spit in his face and you now have a mustache. You got a dad mustache. He's got a mustache. That's just all I Yes. Yes. (laughs) Is he going to twist it up in a minute? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> his, his manager is uh, Anthony Banderas now. Just yes. <laughs> I'm gonna say this. Me, me personally, now as a creative to build new stars for the future. What I want to happen from this, because Cleo, I'm, I feel I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm not, I'm not into RK, bro. Like I think, like I, Randy Orton is Randy Orton's a killer. Okay, like he's a killer, and this is goofball stuff. Like it's not him. It's, it's just all right. I want, I want Riddle to turn on Orton, and like oh. take him out. I want Riddle to get serious. Turn on Orton, take him out. Imagine Riddle coming out the next night wearing like a, a, a evolution tile suit, like not the jacket, just the button down, wearing a man bun, wearing shoes, cutting a serious promo. Imagine hey, and, the heat. And 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 it just to piggyback on what you said, the person that he's feuding in with right now could push that, which would be AJ Styles. Yeah. 
he Matt can push Riddle, that. Yeah, Matt Riddle is a legit buck. He's he's legit in that in uh, in uh in MMA. He's legit. So we can play on that. He can legit go in there and beat you up. All the bro, like I get it, but you can't do that forever. You can't play Wayne's world in the gimmick forever. Like, what if he starts going thin and at the top of the line, whatever? Like, it's going to look crazy. So, like, for me, I thought a good twist to this. What if we turn Matt Riddle heel and he takes out Orton? Like, because you need somebody to replace Orton eventually. What if Riddle becomes that guy? Because he's always been like, I, I want to take out, I want to take out Lesnar. I want to take out Goldberg. You could build that to something instead of just, you know, bro. You know what I mean? You know? Yeah. I, I love that idea. I, my only concern is, is is Matt too early for that turn? Like they haven't sold That's enough merch point. with him being the the the, the face anyway. I like, think you know, I think like, that I think that's why it is the perfect time because we saw it didn't work. Uh, we yeah. saw it when we had the United when he was United States champion. It's cool, but it's it's also to something that like and i would think from a brand's perspective they may not they may be kind of scared to push because of the fact like it still gives that hippie stoner vibe of what he's doing and so that may be also too why they're a little hesitant to just push him as a main champion or anything just like that so like you said if you really got to go from like original bro to this now ogs at status at that it may work, but I'm, I'm just noticing now the face of it hasn't really been working as well. And it's kind of turned him into a novelty act and taking away those skills he has in the ring. Yeah, because like if because like if you watch that, that was it, uh, was it the fight pit match he had with Timothy Thatcher and Kurt Angle was the ref? He was going there. They were kicking. The, listen, they kicked the crap out of each other. Yeah, that's serious. That's He's serious. Matt yeah. yeah. So He's a real one, bro. yeah, He's so we'll that. see. He's got to get that mushroom tattoo covered, though, bro. We, we can't. I can't. I can't do it. I'm like, bro. It's a lot. Like, it's a lot. I know it was an era of your lifestyle and your time. You're probably still rocking with it. But, like, I can't. come on. The kids, the shrooms. The See, skin, again, like another uh, another another reason why it may be time for that push as Shannon Juice suggested. Because, again, it's, it's very hard to push that to them, which you know that's the perception that's being pushed out. So, but we'll we'll see, yeah. But they are the the, the raw tag team title uh, champion. So congratulations to them. Also shout out to AJ Styles and Omos. Like again, I know a very difficult situation to be put into, especially during the pandemic. But great way of being able to come together, keep that storyline uh, going. Very dope for yourself. So always dope to see those uh, to see that happen. Um, and then uh, move, moving forward though, in the SummerSlam, Eva Marie defeated Alexa Bliss. And uh, took over Lily, and then went and defeated Roman Reigns to become the new Universal Champion. Cause uh, it's all red, red everything. everything, everything, everything. She just wrestled every single match afterwards. She was like, "No, nah, I'm gonna take on Sheamus for United States title. I'm gonna do it all." Uh, but that did that did not really happen. <laughs> he said, "Gentlemen." Um, <laughs> very confusing filler match: Alexa Bliss versus Eva Marie. Um, stipulation i guess they join her fun house or something like that i i don't know uh, house of goofballs house, house of goofball, goofball booking house of goofball booking and then to go on raw to where none of this has happened to where alexa bliss is now targeting charlotte for the belt um i again yo this, this didn't this, this didn't hurt alexa like at all like it really didn't but this stuff didn't work for Bray. It's damn sure not gonna work for Alexa <laughs> Bliss. I, I'm sorry. I'm tired of this shit. I gotta be real. I'm tired of it. I love the Wyatt family when they debuted. You need a new creepy factor. Taker had his run. Kane had his run. We needed a new version somewhere. They gave us Boogeyman and all other kind of bullshit. But Bray, it didn't work. After the first year, two years, it didn't work. You throw the whole gimmick with with the fiend over to the, to, to to Alexa Bliss. Now she's she's Harley Quinn more demonic. And it, it's uh... sorry. No, no, no Cleo, nah. we said we said it was gonna get emotional. You're fully justified because first of all, not to sound like Jim Cornette, like I thought the whole I thought this Alexa Bliss thing, I thought it was gonna eventually lead to like a clash with her old partner, like Ale uh Nikki, almost superhero. I thought it was going that way. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going because they were a tag team, they were called literally called Chris Cr Cr Bliss Cross Applesauce was the name of the tag team. I didn't know that. 
Oh my God. What? Why? Okay. Oh. Now, yeah. Vince Lynch, was like, we're not calling it that. We're not calling it that. But that was so their official I, tag team name. I thought that's where it was going to go. But like now with the gimmick she has, it doesn't work on so many levels. Not to sound like Jim Cornette, but I can't take you seriously as a voodoo doll priestess when I see you on Instagram in real life and you're like a bubbly blonde girl engaged to Ryan Cabrera who had a pet pig. At Disneyland, buy- at Disneyland with Disney ears, like really? With the pet pig though, with the yeah. pet pig though. And the pet pig is deaf. It's a deaf pig. But the pet pig passed. Deaf a pig. What? Wait, what happened? Wait, 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 wait. Which one? The pet. I thought the pig passed away. Not, yeah, not Larry. Did Larry pass? Oh, there was two. Okay, maybe there was two. Uh-huh. Larry the Pig, pe- wow, man, R.I.P., bro. I, I ain't, I haven't seen a page in a while, but like she really, yeah. she really did adore that pig. But yeah, man, it's just like Chin to do is right, bro. Like it's a, it, it, it breaks kayfabe way too much now. And I know we are in the reality era to where okay, it's the split thing and stuff like that. But y'all haven't really done anything with this, so now it's kind of like we need to have this either break. Somebody need to give her an intervention. Maybe have Charlotte beat it out of her. And stuff like that to where she goes back to the goddess. Like we we didn't mind that. We 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 enjoyed that. But it's just like that. And it's just this whole even send even Marie to NXT. Stop this. Send stop, even Marie. Stop. No, stop right. <laughs> don't send her to NXT. Don't don't do this anymore. Well, we send her. There. <laughs> Hopefully she's put on the microphone. Let her talk. Just let her talk at this point. Let her be the pretty face to talk because bro, she's gonna get in that ring. She's gonna hurt somebody or herself. You Come know what though? I, I don't I don't yeah, I don't understand why she just doesn't take up like a managerial position. Like to be honest, like I could I could definitely see her in kind of like the managerial. But honestly, you could have the same thing now. Let Sonya Deville do SmackDown, let Eva Marie do Raw as what well, like whatever position they're doing in with the whole Adam stuff. But it's like, yo, like I think that would be a better transition for her as well, too, as doing the television side, like the total divas as far as like production and stuff goes. I don't want her to not be in here, but just as you said, Cleo, it's like, yo, this it, this isn't working. Mm-hmm. And then the only thing we were looking forward to to see if she could do better in the ring, y'all didn't let us see it for all this time. It made us very skeptical. And then you made us see it against Alexa Bliss. And it was just like, you put it in a story to where it didn't change anything. So it didn't do anything. So it's like, yo, Either she's going to be either going to be let go, or we've been like you said, we're going to see somebody get hurt. Yep, it has to stop, bro. I'm sorry, it's yeah. it's it ain't a good look, and no knock to her. You know, she put the training in, I'm sure, but you can't you can't do this. You got. I agree, because 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 like Cleo said, it's at this point, it's been years of training. At this point now, it's been years. It's it's Lana all over again. Like like I, I'm sorry to say, it's just like yo for for it's not for everybody. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's not it's, for everybody. Listen, this is coming from three guys. I mean, two guys. Because did you ever train in professional wrestling? I took one bump, and I said I, I had enough. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> tell you right now. I took one bump, one bump. I was like, wow, that really hurt. And they do this all day. All right, let me all go ahead. And go ahead. Day. Let me just all be a day. fan. <laughs> they put their bodies on the line all day, all yeah. year. It's insane. Uh, so. Listen, we don't we don't do this. We don't do this on an everyday lifestyle. We're not coming off the turnbuckles. We're not hitting the ropes. We're yeah, not taking no, bumps. No. This ain't. And, but this is just us as people analyzing the people we've seen do it to the highest of, of abilities, even to the yeah. mid of, of abilities. No, this is gonna end very terribly for somebody. You gotta you gotta let this go. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I I one hundred percent agree with that opinion. So um, we'll see what's gonna happen to both uh, again them. Uh, we don't know what's happening up with even Marie, but we know Alexa Bliss is now uh, seeming to be going probably going to that title picture. So we're gonna see what's going what's gonna happen. But um, <clears throat> more title changes came at SummerSlam. Uh, Damian Priest uh, finally having uh, some gold in the WWE. The Archer of Infamy is now the mm-hmm. new United States Champion, defeating Sheamus. Wonderful match, wonderful match. Um, yes. I've, I've I've followed yes. Damian Priest since he's did it in the Indies. Very, uh, hard worker, like you know, he killed. He's all he's killed it at NXT. I was a little concerned when it was coming with the bump up, how they were gonna do because he didn't really get any kind of a title run, but killed it with Bad Bunny. Shows that he knows how to work with brands. 
really riding the whole Hispanic Puerto Rican uh, uh, vibe as well. And so to be able to add gold to him, I think if that was probably, if not the smartest decision they made that entire night as far as matches go. And then Sheamus just being a great uh, fucking just wonderful wrestler and, and just to the business as well, being able to hand that down to him, man. Uh, but I want to ask you, um, Cleo, with as we were talking about with prestige of these titles, do you think that Damian Priest is going to be able to maybe help elevate the U.S. title? Because it's been seeming like it's got it's been off the picture lately. Like it's got a new look, everything like that, but it hadn't really been. It ain't it's been hard. there. It's hard, man. We got to see Cena take on new challengers every week. Like it's hard. It's really hard to do stuff like this, you know. Yeah. Um, do I think that he'll be able to elevate it? I hope so, man. Like, who else do we kind of have in that in the, in the realm to now go up against them? You know, who um, else is? Who, we got really, you got a lot of single competitors, like you know, uh, with AJ Styles now, you know, not longer the tag team, Omos. Um, who else do you have? Shelton Benjamins, your Cedrics. Uh, but, but like, what's but like, what's scary with all that too is that like the top people we're mentioning, and I mean, and they're all they can all still go though, but we're talking about buildings for the future. All the top guys over 40, like they haven't built anybody successfully. Like, AJ is a great, but AJ's in his 40s, so Shelton Benjamin, yeah. Kobe just turned 40. Yeah. And um, Xavier, ricochet. I don't know what y'all do with him. I want Ricochet. Yes. Ricochet was doing a lot. Something happened, whatever, and we don't we don't know. But Ricochet yeah. was doing a lot. Ricochet, I think, is a great, great competitor. He's a great talent. Mm -hmm. I would love to see Ricochet go after that United States title and really be a menace to uh, to Damian Priest. That's what I would like. Yeah. I will, yeah. yeah. Do you think? Uh, do you think for for, for Ricochet? Just to, just to touch on just touch on. We don't have to say on. I, I I know we got a lot more to cover, but in terms of Ricochet, he I love I love watching him in the ring, Prince Puma, and everything. He's not the strongest on the mic. Do you think mm -hmm. a manager would help him? I think the fact that you said that he's not strong on the mic lets me know, like, yo, he's got to become strong on the microphone. There's no reason why that guy shouldn't be good on the microphone. He's nah. great. He's yeah. like, bro, your talent is great. Not a lot of people can do what you do. So yeah. he's got to just get better. You he know what he need? Better, bro. You know what he need? All red everything. No, 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 no. This was for, no, no, no. Now this was for real. Now this was for real. This one is definitely for real. She can definitely talk on the mic. I think that will be great and to make him as kind of that if you wanted to be that superhero type stuff, that straight shooter. It's just like, yo, when I step in the ring, I am that bullet. I am that ricochet. Like, I don't need to talk. Like, you got all you need to do is watch out for me. Because mm -hmm. if I get on the ropes, if I get on that turnbuckle, you don't know where I'm flying to. Like, let show, like for him, let his work do the talking, but in the behind the scenes, let him start working on his his microphone skills. But I think it would be great to pin those two together and that could potentially make a diamond out of the both of them. Has he ever had a few Ray Mysterio? No. Um, that'd be, that'd be, that, that would be hard. Actually, it would, that would benefit Ricochet to go to SmackDown because there's a lot that he could do um with ray and then also to dominic seeing as how now you know uh just moving forward uh the next match that we were going to go into SummerSlam, usos took on the mysterios usos remained the smackdown tag team champions keeping the bloodline field of course no surprise as well um but this opens up now the singles competition between Rey Mysterio and Dominic. Love that they were tag team champions, the father-son thing. It worked. Great, great tag team to lose it to. Um, but yeah, I think this would be a great time for them to be able to kind of split up, go do their own thing. Maybe uh, Ray goes to Raw, Dominic goes to Raw, something like that. But two single, like, you know, start breaking this stuff up. We need some, we need singles competitors again. We need to start doing that. I need to see Shinsuke you know, defending that title. I mean, a lot of these people got titles and ain't really defending it. Shinsuke gonna leave in a few, bro. Shinsuke about to get up out of here. Shinsuke's been quiet a long time to be in this company. He's been yeah. quiet too long, if you ask me. So yeah. we're gonna get ready to see Shinsuke dip off in a few, in my opinion, bro. Yeah, I, I can I can see it. I can definitely see Shinsuke uh, making moves back to yeah. Japan. 
going back because yeah, he came in, he came in, made his money. Because that's because that's what it was about too. He came in, made yeah. his money, and I feel same same way with Oscar. Oh. yeah, bro. Like yo, free Oscar. I know free she ain't like locked down, but free, free Oscar, Oscar bro. Like she legit locked up. Free Oscar. Yo, free Oscar, bro. <laughs> like y'all doing her dirty, man. Free Oscar, bro. Let that girl, let that, let that woman go, man. Like she did, like she, she, she did her stuff. We understand, like y'all, y'all not gonna put her where she need to be, man. Let bro, free Oscar, bro. Let that, let that woman go do her thing, man. That woman too much of a dope talent for y'all to be doing her like that. Nice. Um. Speaking of doing somebody like that, uh, we we it, it's time to get into the thick of it. Uh, I'm into the thick of it. Base. Oh, you hit that remix. I am so sick of this because I am definitely sick of this crap. Um, the match, everybody, I, I, I would, I for at least on this show, every each one of us were so anticipated to wanting to see was the WrestleMania rematch between Sasha Banks and oh, Bianca oh, Belair. Yeah. All of us could not wait to finally see these two go at it at SummerSlam. Yeah. Bianca comes out, decked out as she should be. And then we get the ear, Sasha Banks will not be competing tonight. Um, now at first, it, 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 now my first thought was set up when I saw Carmella's music play because Carmella came out and they said that now she's gonna be going for the title. So I'm thinking, you know, Selena Baker from behind, beat up, beat up. Here comes Sasha Banks. Let's start the match. And I'm like, oh, yeah. cool, bet. Yeah. Then it starts to set in that this is really happening. So now hundred questions are going on. Like, what just happened? Why is she not here? What's going on? Why, wh- wh- what, how? After all this buildup, after all this, and she's not here. What just happened? Yep. All of a sudden, Q in Becky Lynch's music. The man has come back around. And came it's back around. And they pulled some bullshit. Bullshit. Bianca, yes. Becky Lynch comes in, challenges Bianca Belair. Bianca accepts. Match starts. Sucker punch. Se- 26 sucker seconds. Punch. Pa- sucker punch. 26 seconds pass. Becky Lynch is the new SmackDown Women's Champion. I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna hold what I want to say, and I want I want to I want to get uh, y'all thoughts on this. Uh, Cl- Cleo. Th- thoughts on how this whole thing transpired? Well, we were there. We were there at that WrestleMania match. We were there. Okay. Sasha Banks versus uh, Bianca Belair. And they put on one hell of a match. It was very emotional. The fact that they wanted, you know, they, they made sure to highlight that match at the ESPYs. Like, it was a real thing. People tuned into that match and was excited to see two Black women main eventing WrestleMania. It was, it was, it was perfect. It was beautiful. Bianca Belair goes on to hold the title for quite some time. Becky Lynch returns. We've been wanting, people have been waiting for Becky to come back for quite some time. And to be quite honest, Becky's big run was happening before, you know, she took an exit. You know, she she got engaged or married to Seth. Do we know if they're married um, yet? Either way, they got a child, they together, yeah, yeah. whatever. They together. They together. <clears throat> you bring her back. Cool, great pop, surprise for SummerSlam, I get it. But then you do that to Bianca Belair, a full-on squash match. Like, not not even a match. I don't consider that a match. I don't. I do not consider that to be a match, bro. The bell rings, boom. Before you know it, it's over. Bianca Belair has dropped her title back to Becky Lynch, who we knew she was going to end up being champion when she comes back because when she left, she was on such a high road and a high horse. Everyone loves her. But not like that. Not like that to Bianca Belair. Not like that, bro. Like, I got a chance to spend... I, Me, uh, Will, you were still at the hotel. Me and Pat and a lot of other folks got to spend uh, that night with Bianca Belair and her family after that mania. We were all at the hotels, great vibes, and it's her first championship, especially on that big of a stage. It was beautiful. So not like that. It hits me just a bit more because I'm like, I was there 
to see the happiness in the family and y'all do that to her like this for this i don't like it well i don't like it brother yeah, you you are i'm 100 with you man like if we just go back and just if we just go back and look at this right take it back to last year's wrestlemania right not this year 2020 the pop she got when she went out to that ring the number of eliminations that's when like i felt like main roster fans were like yo who's that right there the next year she won the royal rumble she won and then she may have been at wrestlemania you have an actual baby face that's actually over with the fans like legit across the board is over you give her a documentary she literally she, she exposes her soul eating disorders highs lows very personal you guys cry you guys display that on the network on in a documentary those are that's very in-depth to go to that and to do all the stuff you did for that to build this star up and then you feed her to becky now i understand that there were like rumblings of her getting booed at the live shows during her last run that they, it was going to kind of getting kind of getting kind of stale whatever but like you said like you said will like to have that moment at wrestlemania that amazing match that to me, a match that was better than the triple threat we got from Becky and Ronda and Charlotte, in my opinion, it was a better match, better, way better finish. Uh, they bossed their way better finish. And this is an actual main event, though. Like that hair whip, I thought Sasha broke her leg when I watched it on TV. Wow. I thought somebody broke. That sound was ridiculous. That sound like we heard that when we were there. We heard that like, yo, the sound y'all hear on TV don't do it justice. You yeah. hear that through the whole arena, like everybody, like even if you wouldn't pay attention, you'll do this. Yeah, <laughs> all that, and you and you feed her to Becky for what? And even then, like I know the pop at the arena was hype. That was more so because they were so happy to see Becky. But when you look at it, like online, and after that, nobody was happy with this. Nobody, and and we feel like you say, like you met her personally. I never met her personally, but I always got the feeling that real life. Great person. Great you know person. how you get you get those Dude. that vibe like real life great person, hard a, worker, a sweetheart. You comes from comes from a very supportive family. Very uh, uh the foundation that you know that she was that she that she comes from is very stable. So yeah. it's just dog. I I was blown by that. Blown. Yeah. I said you gotta be kidding me. I get it. It's Becky. She's back. Cool. Let, let him have the stare off. Let him have. The, yeah. I would have been fine to stare off, and then y'all build it. <laughs> But don't, yeah, or, don't give it. Come on, dog. I like or, this. Or if you have to do this, which you did not, make it a triple threat. Becky pins Carmella. Uh, at, at, at least do that. So if, so if Bianca be like, you didn't beat me. And you can have that dispute like, you didn't beat me for the title. You know what I'm saying? So at least that. But you, you flat out beat her with a modified rock bottom. Like... And it was just oh, like so that pissed me off even more. Oh, I forgot yeah. about how she went. Oh, God. it was a, mo a modified rock that, that they called something that I never heard Becky use ever. She had never used this move before. And then, like, they go, Oh, that's the stuff. So I'm like, what, what, what? The what? You mean a crappy rock bottom? And they took it from right. how do you how, like if, if Becky Lynch isn't going to be a heel, she's going to have a hard time with this crowd because Becky's been gone for a long time. As hot as she was, Bianca was the top baby face. When I was at uh, I, I was at the first uh, live event SmackDown at uh, Houston and Toyota Center. When I tell you when Bianca's music hit, that crowd went nuts. Like the biggest pops of the night were Edge and Bianca at right. uh, at Toyota Center. The biggest pops. She's gonna have a hard time. Like Becky's doing that mic, but she's gonna have to like dig deep to have to make this work for that crowd because I think she's gonna be facing some booze. I'm sorry. It's 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 not. It's not working. It's not going to work. I'm sorry. And I'm like, yo, I, uh, apologies for what I'm about to say next. But this was absolutely stupid. Um, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know who did. I'm not going to point any fingers. But whoever needs it needs to be fired. This was absolutely dumb, horrible booking. And I don't mean just for Bianca. For Becky as well. Because whoever did this, you deprived two women of major moments at SummerSlam. One, you could have let those two have a match, 
even if it was for Becky to go over, you could have gave them a match. So you deprive not only those two women of that match, you deprive the WWE universe of that match. Not only that, you decide to take everything that woman has built, kept, carried for this entire pandemic and made it seem like it was nothing. Same thing you did to coffee when you finally got your big bank at Fox and you fed them to Brock Lesnar. That's bad business. That's two people of color you have screwed out of a championship. And that is making y'all look horrible to your audience. And not only that, now you make Becky Lynch look horrible and have put so much on her shoulders. Because believe me, everything y'all posted on social media, all them comments of is all the same. Y'all did Bianca dirty. Bianca deserves better. Every Becky Lynch post you see, Bianca deserved better. Becky deserved better. The WWE Universe deserved better. Why? And why does this happen? Because you want to feed your ego because CM Punk is on AEW and you want to respond? You want to respond to a B-list show that don't hold a candle to you and rob us of something magical? I don't know who's doing it. I don't know who's made it, but whoever did it needs to take a long hike to the unemployment line. This was terrible booking for everybody. No one enjoyed this. And now we have to go and best believe Friday on SmackDown, you better get them audios ready because everybody is going to be booing when Becky Lynch music hits. Don't think that this is finna go over because it ain't. Don't think this is finna go away. Don't think that Becky's promo is going to be able to get over on this. It's not. Y'all screwed up. Very much so. And so, and now we got to watch two great superstars clean up your mess. Well, hey, well, yeah, I agree. Will, very well said. And it's all very valid. I can say the, the, the most over female baby face on your roster who got cheered by everybody. Like you said, like, and Clea, like you said, the ESPYs highlighted any attention that WWE gets outside of their world. They love. Bianca was bringing them so much attention. She performed at Rolling Loud. Now, granted, that crowd didn't understand wrestling that much, but she was still at Rolling. She was still there. And people knew she was. Meg Thee Stallion stopped for a picture with her. She's a fan. So she so, was supposed to perform at SummerSlam. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if a call was put in. You ain't winning the title. Yeah. They giving you it. How long? I'm not, I ain't coming then. No, uh, no. <laughs> another, uh, another, another reason why maybe Sasha didn't show up. Like, y'all doing what? What's yeah. happening? No, nah, I'm Don't cool off that. I'm cool off that. And for what reason? Because who premiered somewhere else? Oh, no, nah, I ain't with that. And you did it to the women? It's the Rock Nation. It's the Rock in here. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder, how, I wonder how the Rock feel about uh, his, his move now being used by Becky Lynch. I know Kevin Owens got the okay by uh, Stone Cold. I love to see what The Rock thinks about Becky Lynch now using his move to screw over a young black woman who, literally, you now just can you just you just destroyed an entire year of dopeness. A- as Chinadu said, Royal Rumble winner, yeah, WrestleMania, WrestleMania. SB Award winner. Oh. I can't think of all the countless brands you just blew to go for what? Becky? So what? You can get more cricket money? And her merch was flying. Her merch was selling great. So so what? Hey. Now what? Will. Now what's next? I, I, we're going to see. But Will, maybe, hey, for something like this, Will, luckily, hopefully, WWE has, a, has good intelligence and they'll follow this match with the banger blockbuster match. What was the next match after this? It was well, uh, block, well, it, it certainly wasn't a banger. Um, it was one of them Drew other films. Gender Mahal. Um, who? Oh. <laughs> exactly. So uh, we got we got a partial three MB reunion uh, against one another. Um, I will I I will say this though, as opposed to to a, a, as we said the previous match we just discussed, this is two people. It didn't push the needle, but it didn't hurt them either. 
It just it, it was a filler match. It was cool. Then it didn't really do anything, but it didn't affect them either. You know what I'm saying? You know, good way to close it at a major event for a rivalry we didn't really care about. So, you know, as we saw uh, on Raw, Drew's back on uh, in, in the same round title picture around the United States champion and the WWE champion. And, of course, Jinder Mahal is backstage and we'll probably get something on main event. i um, not trying to say anything, but um, it is what it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. And so, yeah. But then that leads us to our triple threat match for the Raw Women's title, Nikki, A-S-H, almost a superhero, um, uh, took on Rhea Ripley, Charlotte Flair, and Charlotte Flair showed everybody once again why she is the queen. Mm-hmm. And you know something? The GOAT. Every time I hit, every time I see the pin, I see the pin and I'll be like, man, y'all ain't finna get this to Charlotte. This some bullshit. Didn't she hold the title? I'm like, I'm not mad at it. She, she got it. She got it. I fuck with it. I don't know why I'm upset. Yeah. Who else gonna get it? She just she killed it. She did she did it right. As soon as you saw the bridge, oh, it's coming. The match, the match that she had with Rhea at the last pay-per-view, that was match of the night. Yes, when she flipped off that crowd that telling Becky. Yep, that was an amazing match. Charlotte is Charlotte's the standard, she's the she standard. Is. She's a standard. Oh, 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 but the, the post interview. Oh, the post interview. Cause cause Cleo knows this. Cause you know, Cleo be knowing my promos. When I when I said that this would be implementing the fact she did it, let me know. I'm like, I don't know if she heard it somewhere, but she heard it. She held man, look, she held that title up and was like, I am inevitable. Oh, Charlotte. Charlotte. Yes. Charlotte. Yes. Charlotte. yes. yes. Charlotte. So now that that bumps us up, and you know what's funny about it, man? Um, I wasn't gonna bring it up, but that just kind of lets you know, like you know, I'm I'm, I'm sure Nikki enjoyed the run of fight, you know, because again, Nick, Nikki, and no disrespect, to Nikki, because now Nikki is solidified in WWE history as a champion, which is dope because a lot of people don't get that opportunity to have that. So it is good to see her in that division of that. But we already kind of knew where this was coming because even in the promos, they like I saw a promo where Rhea and Charlotte was big and then Nikki was right here holding the championship and she was in black and white. And I was like, oh, we know where this is going. We know exactly where this is going. You got to put you got to put it back at the top because we want to see what we didn't get well, at Survivor Series, which is now what we're going to get. Charlotte Flair versus Becky. Title ver- t- champion versus champion in whatever kind of fight it's going to be. Um, and, and, I, and I will say to, to Nikki, to Nikki ASS's credit, to her credit, she was already super fit. She got in phenomenal shape this past year. Yes. To her credit. Yes, she did. Got in yes, great shape. And to, have, and to have to go to work at a company where her husband was fired, where her husband was fired and still come in there with a positive attitude and still put on the best work you can from the same job that fired your husband. Mm-hmm. I commend you, commend you. Yeah. Um, I, I I, just honestly, like you said, with Charlotte Flair, she's, I see a serious competitor in Charlotte Flair. I see a silly gimmick in Nikki A.S.H. I see just goofball. I see silliness like Orange Cassidy, no, no offense to him. I don't see a serious champion. I see something they made for kids for Nikki yeah. ASH. I mm-hmm. saw Nikki making up something to help her get her on TV. I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at it. But like, it wasn't, I mean, like, but I've seen the hurricane already. I mean, no disrespect in terms of gimmicks. I've seen this already. And yeah. it wasn't that red hot to begin with. Anyway. I didn't get it. So it's like, so it's I like, yeah. you see, like, I, I like honestly, mean- I, I thought that the, I thought the superhero thing was supposed to be tied in with Alexa Bliss. That's why I was right. like, I get it. I thought that was going to tie into each other, but it mm. didn't. And I was like, if they were going to do something with Nikki, like with that character, I thought maybe okay, maybe it'll be a slow descent to where she turns evil, like she has a a evil alter ego that comes out and does her. Does no, her she go voice. she she go back to Nikki Cross? Like that's yeah. it. Like uh, yeah, yeah. The screen the screen music come back. You know the. Ah, ah. It's like yo, like she come out flailing, like got, but got like you know maybe some more like powers and stuff influenced by Alexa, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like any, 
Yeah, and then that could have been the whole tag team thing, which we we didn't see no representation of on SummerSlam, which is just another indication of, man, get them titles out of here, bro. Yeah, they're not doing anything with it. I, I want to say just real quick before we move on, though, please yeah. give me Charlotte versus Naomi. Naomi is on that roster. She's awesome in that ring, too. If you want to elevate somebody, elevate Naomi. She's a she she's a she's a quality baby face. Like you can like people have no problem getting by. It'll be a clear heel versus face match. People have no problem booing Charlotte. They have no problem cheering Naomi. You're gonna make it a program. That's something to give us some good matches. Now they haven't done that much with Nick with Naomi's booking, but she's there on the I'm, roster. I'm, man, right as of right now, if I saw that done with Bianca, man, I'm cool on that. Cause the last thing I need to see is Charlotte come in with a boot to the face, do a figure eight, and and had they had Naomi tap out, man. Like I don't I again, I don't know what they're doing when they come to these divisions, but it you know, like it, like, like you said, bro, like they keep trying, like I think going back to something Cleo said earlier today, like y'all y'all keep going. There's nobody that's going to surpass these four women. Like we get it. But y'all are not creating the next generation to stay here. Y'all are squashing them because you didn't do that to Roman when he came. You didn't do that to Seth when they came. Neither one of them have went through what Be- what, what Bianca went through, what Rhea Ripley is going through, or what Oscar is going through. Yeah. So it's like everybody y'all are take y'all are destroying. To build because I and, I and I don't understand why. Because they can still keep their legacy intact. Same thing with Charlotte, same thing with the Beckys. And you can still elevate other folks, man. So I don't I don't know what they're doing. And Will, what's so hard too is that WWE, they know how to elevate someone in losing. Like the next match, it's Ed versus Seth. Although Seth lost, you could still say he was elevated in that match still because he faced Edge. It was a good story, a good match. Good. So they know how to do it. Yeah, because Seth and Seth has been taking really L's for the last almost year. And mm-hmm. it's kept him elevated though. Like he lost against Cesaro. He took yeah. that L. He didn't win that match. He didn't win that that feud between them, but it didn't hurt him. Back WrestleMania losses. He's had back to back WrestleMania losses. All the losses he took to Buddy Murphy, Ray Mysterio, and them to boost up Dominic as well. Like it, we obviously can see it works. Even the same thing with AJ Styles taking these L's to Matt Riddle. It's like you see, and it doesn't affect them, and it boosts up the person that it needs to boost up. Like you said, with Edge coming out to the brood, man. I'm, oh, I'm not gonna lie, bro. This is why I wish everybody just got along because if all three of them popped out, yeah. And it came, oh, I would have lost my shit. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine I would have lost it. Ooh, Christian, imagine Christian coming out with Gangrel on the brew. Hell, imagine Christian coming out with the Impact title on his way. <laughs> oh, my God. Both of them, and they all wear the white shirts. It just, oh, bro, that would have been hard. I'm sorry, that would have been fire just for one night. One night, and then they just, they stay up there. They ain't got to walk with him to the ring. They just, it's just there. It's like for one night, we saw the brood come back. The but yeah, man, they- has that, the fact that Edge has that in the pocket now, like brood Edge is a thing. I'm like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> rated R Edge, uh, you got regular Edge, but they have brood Edge as, a, as an alternate. I'm like, dog, we got to live and see that. That's beautiful. I love it. I, I got I to gotta see him take on Finn Balor. Like I don't know what 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 Edge's future is, but I gotta see him take on Finn Balor, at um, least. With the, bro, they they can't do the. Listen, you can't, you can't. We tried it with oh, Bray. Bro. The alter ego shit don't work. No, 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 no. Not the demon. No, 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 no. Not the demon. Not the demon. No, 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 not the demon. I'm sorry, but I mean, no, no, no. Just the prince. I just want as far as like wrestling, uh, uh, move like wrestling prowess versus wrestling powers, not gotcha. demon versus brood edge. No, 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 no. Leave that demon stuff alone. But I would love to see the prince take on edge just as far as a wrestling match would go. I think that would be phenomenal. Wow. But yeah, edge and them did not did not disappoint. Um, he defeated Seth by submission. Great match. Like there's like no notes. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how you come in. That's how you put on the match. That's how you end the feud. That's how you live up to a, what, seven-year wait for us to see, and that's how you close that out. And would not mind seeing them 
maybe doing something at the next uh, pay-per-view, which is Extreme Rules. So I would not mind seeing that again, but we'll see. Um, you know what I didn't want to see? This next match. Um, Bobby Lashley versus who I hate to now call this, but Oldberg. Um, Bobby Lashley retained his title, uh, defeating Goldberg as we have all thought Goldberg would be defeated. Uh, his Achilles heel went out. And um, I'm a huge fan of Goldberg. It was one of the reasons uh, why I did get into wrestling, but I uh, have to be honest. Don't come back. Don't come back. Yeah. That, that right there show, don't please, please don't come back. Now, uh, and, and with that too, was that was that storyline or was that real? He really tore the Achilles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, oh, it was. Yeah, he so it's like the Goldberg match. You only go two minutes after you hit that two minute mark. He like he immediately runs out of gas. I don't it was just... only cool in WCW, like legit, like legitly. It was only cool there with the NWO going and Sting and all. It was on. He was great there. That character, the build, the streak. It only worked there. As soon as you brought him over to WWE and he walked down that ramp for the first time, I was like, "I don't. This immediately doesn't fit here. It mm-hmm. doesn't fit. For some reason, this just doesn't fit." And here we are, years later, still having to sit through this. And listen, bro, this got to stop. This has to stop. Get him out of here, Goldberg. They put you versus Brock and you came back. You almost killed Mark Calloway. You almost yes. did killed. Now, you almost killed Taker. You almost killed Mark Calloway, you bastard. Yeah. Time yes. to go. Send this Mark right. home, bro. Yes, well, time. It's time. He's not in the Hall of Fame, right? Yeah. Okay, you got nothing else to do here. Go home. Go fucking yeah. home. Like, go you home. good, bro. Go. Like, stop tarnishing. Like, don't tarnish the legacy you done built, bro. Like, we get it. Like, I'm glad for you. Like, and, and too, even as, like, from a parent standpoint, yo, I, I'm I'm glad that your son got to see you wrestle. You got to get him involved and stuff like that. It's a great experience. But it's like, bro, you got to stop this before. Like, just like you said, well, even before you hurt somebody or worse yourself. So, I don't like you said, Tinder, I don't know if it was real, if it was set to go in with, with the uh, show or the programming, but... I'm I'm very much done with the whole Goldberg run. Let's yep. let's leave it where it was. Thank done. you for everything you've done. Thank you for the your excellent career. <laughs> Let that shit go. Let no, it go. Yeah. Um, it, like I said, it was only cool in WCW. Like he had the right, it. right, right place, right time, made a bunch of money. Mm-hmm. And it's it don't work here, bro. It, it don't. don't. It just simply don't. We want to see stories. We want to see matches. We don't even like squash matches over here at WWE. We don't. Mm-hmm. We really don't. Nope. We really don't. The last cool thing with squash matches was Brock's build. That's it. That was, yeah. it. That was the coolest <clears throat> part of it. Brock coming out, destroying whoever was in there. Yes. Yeah. That was mm-hmm. cool. Bro, you're too old. You're not beating up nobody. Stop this. This is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And yet, just an, and then yet, just another bad booking of towards the WWE champion, um, and the WWE championship. Like I, I feel like y'all don't even care about that belt anymore. You're not, you're not throwing him absolutely anything, no. and you can see the subtle differences in our final match we get into, which is of course the Tribal Chief taking on John Cena and a and there's the standing, money. Yeah, standing there's tall the <laughs> as the Universal Champion. Um. Beat them clean. They let them beat them clean. No antics. No bullshit. No, nothing. no low blows. No help. Nobody clean. A oh. straight cow, cash cow match, bro. When I tell you, everybody won. This is like if you if you're in the boxing term, the purse was fat for yeah. each yeah. person. That yeah. new merch Cena drop fire. Fire to I like I even want to get it like low with the, NFT, to, with the NFT bill to it. 
Yo, you, you, you get this you, merch and this NFT. You already know that's finna be ridiculous. So summer Cena special edition stuff, like the movies that he just came through and finna like like eight with that. Same thing with uh Roman Reigns on his side, bro, solidifying himself as this is the guy. This is the person that I am going to stand behind the next 10 years, and he is holding it. They're allowing him to be Joe as he's Roman Reigns, and that's just gonna make for great television and keep making smackdown as we say the place where the real players play um but stuff definitely got to get tainted because everything can't end with a damn fairy tale um as i like to call them good old bitch lesnar has returned okay all right no no and you know why i'm calling him that because you came out bobby you came at the wrong time. Why is he ducking Bobby? Stop ducking Bobby. You belong on Raw. I don't care about Paul Heyman having the both of y'all under your roster. If anything, I feel like the three of y'all should come together and really run this thing. But hey, that's just me. That's just me. But we know Brock don't work well with others. We know Brock is a lone wolf. So go over to the W. Go over to Raw. Go over to Raw because you know what I have loved to see? I would have loved to see Brock go up against Bobby. Brock beat Bobby and then Big E cash in on Brock and take the title. That would be nice. I agree. That would be dope. But no, instead we get the Tribal Chief being fed more money, more dollars. And of course, who's Bobby facing now? No one knows. Goldberg's son. Listen, uh, yep. <laughs> um, here's what I love about what's going on with Roman. This is the ultimate long-term story. This is the ultimate one. Yeah. There was no it. way I would have thought they would have been able to do this in this era. No way. Right. But Roman returns. He's a tribal chief. He's the head of the table. It's family. I'm the I don't know why you family the legendary W what the, their ties to the wrestling industry. I now hold this crown. I got Alpha and Sika pulling up on me at the top of the damn uh stage after I didn't beat the shit out of my cousin. Like this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Okay, big pay-per-view match. Cena returns. Oh big pay-per-view match. Roman uh, uh, uh Brock returns. Oh I see a pattern. Mm-hmm. There's only one person left. There's only one person left to return for the true, true battle of the head of the table, the tribal chief. It's family. And it is the great one. The people's champ. Yeah. Dwayne The Rock Johnson must return one more time to finally put the big imprint on this storyline. That's the only thing left. If mm-hmm. this isn't happening, if this doesn't happen, you know, you kind of got to just shrug your shoulders and just like, it wasn't in the cards. Rock's not coming no. back. Rock's, you know, he's already, he quote unquote has retired. So he says, but if you yeah. don't let this happen, if this doesn't happen, this is the worst. This, this, there's, no, there's no good ending without that one. There's no good ending here. It has to be that. I won't accept anything less. It has to be that. <laughs> I got. I got to be honest with you. Do you? No. So let me ask this before I, I before I do though, like piggyback on what you're saying. Now, uh, as we spoke earlier, we've seen them now allow champions to kind of start trying to break these records, as we've seen in like the Bruno San Martinos, even to the CM Punk's uh, reign, even the Brock Lesnar's reign, and uh, with Walter. Walter held that title for over two years. Roman now has held it over a year with this now previous SummerSlam going over. So the question is, as you said, if they're moving towards that, do you see that possible, as you said, in this modern day and to be on such a platform, which is SmackDown? Do you think that's what they're pushing towards? I hope so. And I I, I don't expect Rock to come back and win. I don't expect Rock to come back and be, because he did that already for us. He came back. Mm-hmm. He held the title. He wrestled. It built up to the second WrestleMania. Uh, him and actually, Cena. changed it to this design. Actually, yeah, was that was the design. Yeah. Which was him. I love that yeah. design. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't expect him to come back and win. I just expect him to come back and talk that talk to Roman's face 
And Roman's going to tell him, listen, I don't need you to come here and tell me that I'm the head of the table and Travis should respect me. I don't care. I don't care. You couldn't compete with me here. And oh, could I not? I don't. I, I, here's the thing. I don't think we're getting that. I don't think Why we're getting not? that. This, I don't think we're getting that this year. You know who I think we get? No, not this year. We won't see it this year. But Dang you know who I think we I think we're gonna see this year? Who? Austin. Austin for Dallas, Rock for LA at WrestleMania. You think we're gonna stone co out of retirement? Bro, I bro, bro. Cause think about it. Match wise, it would not be bad for Stone Cold because of the fact it's Brawler versus Brawler and it's in Dallas. But the thing with Stone Cold, he didn't retire for 18 years now. He's not you think you gonna come come back out, bro? Bro, I, I'll say to you, I'll say anything. I would have I would have said, you know what? I completely agree. But we also too have seen two people who have been told you will never wrestle again. Main event WrestleMania. Anything's possible. That is what that has given me. But I, I I see, like you said, because there is a pattern going of we're going to keep feeding you this because that's kind of how they did even Drew as well uh, when they had him go up against Goldberg and stuff like that. There And there's always been that talk of Stone Cold coming back. So I don't know if it's going to be a WrestleMania event type of match or something like that. But if this were to have some way of happening, it would be now. Vince but you got to hold it. off on the rock. You got to hold off on the rock for a good little bit. That has to be Roman's pinnacle. Yes. Like after it's we've seen, story, 100%. yeah. But it got it next can't man. be. It can, it got to be next man. It got to be in L.A. It has to be right there, and he has to stand tall. I don't think it needs to be L.A. But Trinity, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about this. I don't think it has to be L.A. I think it has to be Dallas, only because of just how big that stadium is. That's more of a story to like. Doing it in LA is one thing because Rock and Hollywood, that's cool. But no, no, new state, but new state, new paper, stadium, new know, stadium. The new stadium ain't touching that hundred thousand plus fucking stadium in Dallas. AT C Stadium is massive. It's, it's ridiculous. It's massive. It's it is massive. Huge. It is massive. I couldn't man. believe it when I saw it in real life. I'm like, that's massive. Be. I could see that shit from miles away. That but yeah. you gotta remember. So crazy. And I went to I went to the All Star game in Dallas. I didn't go to a football game. I went to a basketball game in the middle of that fucking place. It's ridiculous how many people that yes. can fit in there. It's stupid. Huge, over a hundred thousand. I don't know, bro. Absolutely. I don't know that Holly Hollywood is speaking to me more, bro. Like you know how many feet seats gonna get filled up for that with stars, new you stadium. Know how many comp seats are going to have to give out because it's LA and it's Hollywood. No. You know how you know how Dallas, we Yo, you know, know how many brands for the sit there cake for that? How much huh? money they finna make? You know how much money they finna make with all of them people being there? I see it with the 100,000. I'm just like it's I, I see it both ways. I do see it both ways. Like you said, if they cuz if you want to fill out 100,000 people, that's the only way you're going to be able to do it. That's the but way. We haven't seen none like The Rock literally got a couple. Because here's the thing. There's two. The timeline ain't going to make sense. And the reason why I say that is, think about it. We now just got Brock. We get Brock at what? Brock. First of all, Brock ain't going to get one title match at all. Brock is not going to go to extreme rules and lose and that be it. Because after extreme rules is what? Survivor Series, correct? I think they go to Saudi Arabia too. And, and, and oh yeah, yeah, crown, crown jewel, crown jewel, but no title. It ain't. I it's it. It's very unlikely that Roman will drop title overseas. Very rare. There's that. The Brock. Remember when Brock and Rock actually they went at the the did they headline at WrestleMania? It was a uh, SummerSlam 2002. SummerSlam. The one that yeah. uh, they had. Then Brock left to either go do. I think he was come come and do walking tall. I think that's the last. Yeah, 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 he left. Yeah, yeah, that was because he would get, he had got a little bit skinnier. Right, but and we didn't see. We never got a chance to see the Brock and Rock go back at it. Right. No. Nope. Okay, nope. so even that is more storytelling to the point. It's like, yo, Romans beat Brock. He came back to get the title. I'm gonna beat his ass again. I did what you could never do. But will Brock what? take? Ooh. But will Brock? But will Brock take that? Will Brock take that? That's the thing. We, no, think about, think about it, think about it, bro. Look how much they put into Brock. Do you really think? Because, because think about it. Like, if we have that in Saudi Arabia, the only thing next, and like I'll say, that ties in to make that make sense 
is Survivor Series because I think this is what the 25th anniversary for The Rock, and that's where he debuted as well. So right. that makes sense if that's where the call out can come or that's where we see the beginning of this happen. Because we know The Rock can't give us a year to prepare for something and stuff like that. So if it's to happen, it's got to happen starting either at Saudi Arabia, which I don't think it's going to do, or at Survivor Series. Regardless of when, though, like I know for I know Roman Rock that in game it has to be carefully scheduled because I know with Rock's movie schedule and insurance because I think they said last time he got hurt in that ring that's what caused Hercules to suffer with promotion because he filmed Hercules but he couldn't promote it the same way and I think yeah. that movie kind of I think I, I think it didn't do as great as they wanted it to do but yeah. Rock was on shelf yeah so so no, I, I forgot yeah production. and 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 some director even mentioned that too I can't remember who it was he was current he had been working with it'd be just like yo you're still wrestling you're a movie star what are you doing like that was a direct quote from one of the directors it was like yo stop but again, but again, too. Cash flow, bro. That's a lot. That's a lot that gets put on, put into these films. They're investing a yeah. lot, and Rock lot has proved. Money. Rock has proven without the wrestling that he can return on those investments every single time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we love you for that, Rock. But this is this is young Pete Vaughn talking to you as your nephew. We need you back. Oh you! Oh yeah, you gotta go. Oh, you gotta come back. Oh yeah. Thank you for pulling the car, Leo. Thank you for pulling the car. I, I oh, yeah. need you to come back, and I need you to put this stamp on this storyline. Oh yeah. Roman Reigns, your cousin. You came out to the Royal Rumble, lifted his hand to the many boos of Philly, whatever. We are so far past that. We're so far past that. Roman Reigns has become everything that we all knew he could be. He's the he must watch TV. He's selling the pay-per-views. He's putting asses in seats. He calls himself the head of the table, the tribal chief, but we all know there's one true head of the table when it comes to that bloodline, and it is you. Hey, and low key, okay. hey, and low, hey, and low key, the the I, man, I hope it get personal. I hope it get personal, yes. bro. Be awesome. like, yo, be like, yo. You you think you're the tribal chief, but remember, that's only real true bloodline. Oh, don't do that. Don't bring remember it into that. the because he's half black. Don't do remember, that. Yo, yo, if you go, hey, if you go do it, do it. Do Ooh. it. Go all the way in. Go all the way and be like, hey, you see, you see how we do Joe. Don't make us do it to you. Oh, damn. Yo, I'm that's telling you, bro, because that'll that. set up a lot of stuff. I'm telling you, bro, because if you let, because here's the, if you let Joe talk, that's what sells. Joe is the one that said, yo, it's like missionary every night. And the he has to do that because that's the only way he will be able to keep up with the rock mic wise. He was because like, again, yeah, we, we know he's not keeping up with Rock. Exactly. And the thing is, too, he wasn't really keeping up with Cena, and Cena can't keep up with The Rock. So he, no, no, no. Uh-uh. I went back and watched, hey, hold up. Uh-uh. Bro. I went back and just watched these promos last week. And I'm telling you, mm-hmm. Cena low key came out on top of these back and forth. The oh, reason why, the but, but, oh, but the Ooh. reason why, but the reason why. He ain't writing those. That's scripted. He ain't writing it. The staff writing it. You think Cena's not writing anything? I didn't say anything. But we know we didn't see Rock come off the top of the head with his stuff. Majority of his stuff was off script. Listen, listen. As, as it, I think I, we, we grew up when Rock was Rock, right? We grew up when mm-hmm. he, he built every catchphrase there was. It made him the superstar that he was. When he came back for the Cena run, it was a little iffy. It was like, are these dated? Do these still hit the same? It didn't have the same effect. But we're older now. The newer generation is in the stand, so it maybe doesn't have that same effect. And they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't uh, 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 emphasize as much when they're when they're screaming it out. Something seemed off. So I don't know about Rock coming back and still having that same on the microphone. Blah, blah, blah. He don't need it, it though. He's Rock. He, he don't. But it's gonna be the same thing with Cena. Cena got one thing. This is not gonna translate in in fifteen years. This is not going to be it. And that's the eyebrow, it. the middle finger, the what chance you think this is going to leave? What it, it, or do you think that's going to be as substantial as what The Rock has done? The Rock has more. Give yes. me another thing. Cena has this only trademark. What is another one? Oh, I forgot. 
Oh, stop. No, he has no. The Rock got <laughs> smell what The Rock is cooking. The eyebrow. I, I'm sorry. Look, we, one that I can just end all this with. SmackDown. I understand. John Cena ain't never got a SmackDown. I understand. Them boys ain't the whole show after a Rock catchphrase. So, oh, I'm sorry. That nigga ain't no. I excuse my excuse my language. That man is nowhere when it by rock when it comes to mic skills. No, but I will I give see I will give Cena his due. Cena is definitely it's not it's not like it's this. It is no, definitely it's here. right here. Bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna do this. Who is viewing? It's right here. It's right here. Yeah, it's literally like this. It's literally here, and he be catching up on things. I'm not even gonna front on that. For sure, but for sure. but but yeah, when it comes to it, man, rock rock is like Michael Jackson's thriller on the mic. Like as much as y'all want to shoot up there with it, man. Like it, it ooh, almost. But boop, sorry, Roman so gotta Ro- be rock clean. Yeah, Roman. Roman, Roman gotta go personal, and Roman has to win clean. And after that. After this mania, I want to ask y'all both this too, though. Ever going because this is the this is kind of where like I get stuck at because I, I look at their main roster now. I look at the landscape of who they've been booking, and like I don't know where he goes after Rock. Like after Rock, who should challenge Roman next? Because for it, me, I don't even know. It, it it ain't even really more about that now. It's really more about just conquering. So then that's where you should move to. Now it's build your faction, kind of like how Triple H did with Evolution. At one point, we started more seeing Batista, Ric Flair, and Randy be that forefront as Triple H is back there. And then when someone wanted to oppose him, it was like, okay, and then it was the beat up. So it's like now you can kind of start taking a step back, go do like, you know, promo runs, go get all, you know, start bringing that bag in as they, as they want you to be anyway. I think that's what they're trying to get him to. And then that starts to correlate with like how we said, now you can bring May- Naomi in and flip fear of uh, fill the glow to fear the glow. And then she comes over there takes over, joins the bloodline, becomes SmackDown women's champion. Same thing with, uh, with, uh, uh I'm sorry, Nia Jax and, uh, Tamina, Tamina switch up on, uh, Natalia, Go uh to Naya, and now they added to the bloodline. So you just building an entire faction, and now it's how do you take them down? As much as we want to see that, like I, I don't think that they'll ever pull the trigger. I never thought they would pull the trigger with Roman and the Usos, and really because they teased it years ago when everyone was a face. It happened. Yeah. I was like, are they gonna give it to us? And then boom, we don't see it. And then now we got it as all heels, cool. But to have an entire heel faction based off simply just being the bloodline and being a Samoan back uh, a descendant, I'm just like, can y'all pull this off and it work? Can I mean, you? I mean your audience ain't that. Your I mean ain't that. It, I mean I mean we're doing it. They built this industry. So you and might as well and listen if we if we if we saying anything from the and we and we can and we can do is this as we wrap it up. Think about it. Rikishi, the wild Samoans Yokozuna, all of these people, if they had to go and say the pinnacle of our family, the peak of what we could have strived to be is now within the Usos, Roman Reigns, even The Rock, Nia Jax, and Tamina. Those people have shown all of the, all of the hard work that they did. This is the pinnacle of the Anoa family. And if it is any time to pull that trigger, it would be now. So people know what it is y'all have done, what it is you are doing, and what it is you'll set for the future. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, well uh, and uh, uh, I know we're about to close in a bit too, but just last question, because I, I, I love the fact that we have a guest on here. These you can ask these extra questions. Oh, the yeah. way Evolution got their, their stable over was that Randy and Batista, they both turned on Hunter. That's how they got over. So between Jimmy and Jay Uso, because it seemed like they're building Jay to eventually turn on Roman and be yeah. like a top guy. But Mike skills, you could argue Jimmy was better. But with that DUI, another DUI, you feel like you could tell they kind of halted that Jimmy's the like resistance in this. You could tell they pump brakes on it a lot. Mm-hmm. Out of those two, who do you think could possibly challenge Roman to overthrow him and become a new top guy? Out of those two Usos. 
so hard because of twins. <laughs> it's so hard, no matter what. It's just hard. It's just hard because of twins. Uh, yeah, when Jimmy comes back, you know, Jay was already riding right hand man merch. Yeah. 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 So then Jimmy comes back and Jimmy looking at him like, yo, you Romans bitch, nigga. That's not how we do. Yeah. That's not how we do? What did you want? Yeah. And then they, you like you said, they shelved it. They were like, nope, yeah. backseat mm-hmm. your ass. Yep. Yeah, I'll do everything. I think, I think you can re I think you can reinvigorate that entire feeling. Um, I just don't I wonder how. Like Jimmy has yeah. seen Roman do all this crazy stuff already. What's gonna be the one thing that's gonna make him say, hey, hey, hold up, hold up. Ooh, ooh. Maybe Roman has to go ultimate and, and get physical with said white. Maybe he has to go nose to nose with said Naomi. Ooh. And, and oh, wow. like, that, boom. Now it's that, over. I love it. Book it. That's, that's, the, that's the plan. Don't do it. That's the plan. Don't book it. Right that. Don't even acknowledge that like she's a part of the family too much on air. That could be really good. Yeah. Uh, another thing, another thing too that could split that up to do that. Jimmy could win the Intercontinental Championship because mm. you bring you bring a, it, it, actually either or you bring another title into there. That's when the separation starts. And then too, if it's like how you just said, there's a lot that can go with that. Either Jimmy gets it, Jimmy starts to kind of defer from that, and then now bring in the two. Like, yo, are you leaving the blood? Like you 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 you've been acting real different lately. You've been hitting different lately. As a matter of fact. And so then, like you said, now comes in the mind games of like, I would hate for us to not no longer have your wife here on the roster. Mm-hmm. Or he, like you say, she he walk up to him and go, you need to talk some sense into your husband and understand that we doing this for family. Mm-hmm. I love because, again, Naomi is, is a character that we know is related to, is in the family. We know that, but they never discuss it too much on air. So that well, some, I mean, there that though, great. but it's been discussed. It's been discussed on the total divas thing. So it's just yeah, like, yo, it's yeah. So it's just like, yo, why, why not? Especially since the fact you're not like, as you said, she's gonna do time and time when we bring her up. You're not doing anything with her. So it's like, not doing anything. It's like bring her to SmackDown, bring her over there, and just let's let this happen. But I think that that's what's something that may need to happen but I'm, I'm i'm i don't know who's like every time they've made something to go who's going to stop this person i truly do not know who is going to stop roman reigns oh, I, I don't know, know either man. i have no clue <laughs> this is the greatest build of a character <laughs> so like i'm and, only and, tuning in to see the slow walk the, yes that bro yo it's yo i'm like this it's so Cool. That's it, bro. Like I'd like, yo. So shout out to Roman, man. Like again, this is it, it, it's great to see. Um, even shout out to Cena. I know people. A lot of people were hating on Cena and stuff like that. Cena did what he was supposed to do, man. And I got to give him all respect for that, man. Whether you love him, whether you hate him, John Cena came in. Yeah, he's a star. And and star. as as inevitable as it was for Charlotte to win. Cena is going to break that record, and and if and if you so. want to disagree, we can have a discussion about it. But hey, it's well deserved. I agree. I'm cool with him breaking that record, bro. I'm He's cool with go. him sitting at 17. I, I gotta give Michael Cole a quick. Uh, I gotta give him. I'm like, who's feeding you the the goat, the greatest of all time, John Cena? Y'all y'all throwing this label quite right now. Like right now, this is like this is when the time to bring that label out for John Cena. Okay. Michael, Cole you know they they always do in that match. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They stay. He been he been throwing that out since I think the lap before the the WrestleMania when he faced Bray. Because I remember too, Cleo, you had mentioned that. But like now they call him the Goat. Now they're like the greatest of all time, and I'm just like of all time. Hey, but you know what? It make perfect sense because of one of two reasons. One, he has earned that title to do it, and two, for the main reason. You can now get Hulk Hogan out of there and put him as the face of your entire lineage Please. and ain't got to worry about no end bombs being dropped. So. Yeah. I'll be real. I've never been just, I know so I've never been a Hogan fan too, man. It's like, I've never been a Hogan fan. Like I've never, I don't get it. It's just like. He was for a different era. One, he was for a different mm-hmm. era. That era yeah. like loved him for the, the vitamins and nah, nah, bro. And then the true colors came out. We see, like, literally, it's like, yeah. oh, okay. But yeah. I, you know, we were in Tampa to do, and he's from there. 
So they 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 had a segment where him and um Titus O'Neill was coming out. Every time he picked up the microphone to talk, Tampa booed the shit out of him. His I know hometown. They they didn't care, bro. They did not care at all. Did not so, care, bro, at all. It, like he's they ruined the, he's ruined that image for sure. Yeah, because really because like that's because that's who you really are, Hogan. I'm gonna be so real. Like who you are in that bed, that's who you were in bed with one of your friends' wives. First of oh, yeah. all, yeah. right? Us. They Pillow talking, like yeah. Whew. With but your hey, friend's man. wife. With your friend's wife. But hey, man, like he's like like but like Cleo said. That person is from a different era. And so that's why I understand, like, yo, if Vince wanted to paint somebody new, like, yo, he did it. Like, John, like, yo, like, I in the, ne- in the next 20 to 40 years, Hogan is going to be considered a novelty. And then when you talk about WWE's Mount Rushmore's, it, it's going to be Cena, Taker, and whoever else you want to fill those other spots at. But, yo, like, again, whether you love him or hate him, that man has done it. That man has held this industry as much as he can and has definitely moved the bar in ways of whether it, you don't want to see it or want to see it. And just applaud to you, John, for really just John, giving yeah. Roman what he needed to get over on the top. So, but uh, with that, we do have to come to a close because, uh, you know, we, I, I said, we're, we're very busy. I've kept these guys here more than they need to. I know they got life to get back to, man. So I just want to thank uh, I guess Cleo for checking in, man. Uh, always want to have you back. You know you're part of the KFA team. All the, the way, Chinna do. You know what it is. Thank you everybody for checking out the wrestling show for us by us. KFA coming at you every K-Fabe. week, Fridays, every time. KFA, and we will catch you. The goddamn KFA, head and poke the KFA. <laughs> <laughs>